everybody, in today's video we're going to be going over a potential upcoming winter storm for portions of the Northern Plains down into portions of the Tennessee and Ohio River Valleys and then back through into the Mid-Atlantic and the Northeast. Some of the models are indicating some sort of nor'easter while others just keep this further to the south and actually bring some snow to portions of North Carolina and Virginia. So we're going to go over the three main models, the GFS, the Canadian, and the European model, break down what all of them are showing. Uh, in terms of the system and then kind of just give you a good idea of what could happen probably by tomorrow or the day after I'll have a snowfall forecast for just the northern plains and the central states from this system uh, because they'll be impacted within another day or two with this system but my snowfall forecast for the mid-atlantic and the northeast depending on what happens there will come out probably in the next two or three or maybe even four days because it is still a few days out and there is still so much that can change so Here's the current uh, National Weather Service page. We have some high wind warnings in effect for portions of Montana and Wyoming, as well as for portions of Oregon and California there. We also have some wind advisories in effect for portions of the Northwest and some winter weather advisories in those purples for portions of the Northern Rockies and the Northwest with some winter storm watches in effect for portions of Washington State and also some more winter storm warnings in effect for portions of Idaho. Idaho, Montana, and California there. I believe those are uh, dense fog advisories in effect for portions of uh, some of the central states, so from the lower Great Lakes southward into Missouri and Kansas, and then we have some winter weather advisories from that system uh, back through into the northeast from West Virginia and Maryland northeastward into Massachusetts and Rhode Island, and actually that rain snow line like I was talking about yesterday did actually go a lot further south than what we were expecting, so that rain snow line was actually more uh, kind of like this uh, and we were actually expecting that to be a, li a little bit further to the north so some of those areas actually did get quite a bit of snowfall out of that system and it definitely did outperform uh, what was expected from that system so here's what the GFS is showing from the system we have that system up through into portions of uh, southern Canada and into the northwest right here. We have that nor'easter that's currently impacting portions of the northeast uh, that's going to be moving out. But this is actually going to be a very crucial part of this uh, whole uh, whole sequence of events. Because this system will, if you do get that nor'easter, if that pushes out further to the east, it'll act as if it's a block. And it'll kind of stay there and it'll prevent the system from moving further east. So what it'll have to do is move further to the north like what the GFS is showing if this system moves out a lot quicker and this system dives further to the south then what we're going to see is the system literally just uh, slide further to the south and you'll actually have too much cold air in place to actually get any snow if you live further to the north of there so uh, we we definitely have a couple moving parts here we have this system that is important uh, as to what happens with it we also have uh, how much cold air is there going to be that's going to be one of our questions and then exactly where this system tracks is also going to be a very, very big player into what actually happens. The GFS is more showing a nor'easter and northeast storm, while the GFS, or while the Canadian and the European model are both showing more of a mid-Atlantic Tennessee Valley uh, snow system. So... This would be by Tuesday, and we're dealing with that system moving out of portions of the northern plains. And then as we zoom into the eastern U.S., we're looking at some of that snow for portions of Minnesota, the Dakotas, and into Nebraska. That low pressure uh, kind of uh, trades energy with another one down in Oklahoma and Arkansas. This one is going to move up a little bit uh, further to the north and then start to head further to the east, and you'll see that play out. So we see both of these areas of energy continue to form together. The system wraps around around and kind of does a circular motion before starting to head out further to the east. This would be by Friday by this point where we're dealing with this system heading further to the east and then you start to see that because we have a high pressure out southeast of uh, Florida right down here uh, where we have a high pressure and because we still have a low pressure up here this is going to allow this to move further uh, up the coast and kind of bring a little bit of snow actually to these regions right here. So if we play this through on the GFS you see that this 
system heads up through North Carolina into Virginia and then off the coast of New Jersey and Delaware uh, where you're actually dealing with snow a little bit further inland of the coast then that snow wraps around on that back end by Saturday and you're dealing with the system moving out uh, into portions of New England uh, by Saturday evening and into Sunday morning it's pretty much all said and done with so that's what the GFS is showing and again this is only one model's interpretation of what could happen with this system here's what the Canadian model is showing with this event we see that system up into portions of South Dakota and North Dakota there and that's going to dip further to the south now we have a very cold air mass that's already in place for portions of the eastern United States uh, and we do have some again some very cold air in place we also have some more cold air further to the west and this system is going to dip down further to the south and because of how cold that air mass is and how far south that cold air mass is getting it's going to actually slide this underneath the air mass and go down into portions of North Carolina and Virginia and your main snow will actually stay further to the south so as we play this through you do start to see that that system heads further to the south we see that low pressure uh, found in Oklahoma there and then that continues to move further to the east we see some of that snow still occurring for Missouri Kansas Nebraska Iowa if this were to be correct that system is much further to the south if you remember the GFS model had that low pressure uh, go from about Oklahoma northward into Missouri and then go back south a little bit and further east into North Carolina before heading further north what the Canadian Canadian model is doing is bringing it into Oklahoma, dipping it south, and then it's going to move it up uh, further to the north. So that's going to allow the, this colder air mass to go back further to the east and block this system from heading northward, and that's what's going to allow this to stay further to the south. So you start to see that uh, by Friday. This system is moving into South Carolina, and we're actually starting to see some snow head out into portions of Illinois, Indiana, Kentucky, Ohio, Virginia, and North Carolina. And then that system moves offshore of North Carolina. We have that cold air mass bringing temperatures that are below freezing to much of the southeast states, and you're seeing that cold air come in from the north. And then you start to see more of that snow wrap around into North Carolina and Virginia, and then even some heavy snow, according to the Canadian model. And then the Canadian model... Just just leaves this offshore does not bring it onshore to the northeast it really just keeps it offshore you're dealing with drier conditions maybe a little bit of snow along the coast uh, if the Canadian word to be correct but it really brings this off to shore and it really does not impact a lot of land except for in the uh, mid-Atlantic and Tennessee Valley area now here's what the European model is showing with this event uh, because the European model actually does agree a lot more with the Canadian than it does with the GFS model uh, we have that system out through through portions of the northern plains here's that system or that nor'easter that's in, uh, that's affecting portions of the northeast as of right now and then we see that high pressure out to the southeast right here which is going to help uh, kind of spin away and that's also going to help uh, kind of uh, steer the system uh, further to the east so here to be by Wednesday and we're dealing with that system uh, continuing to strengthen and head further to the south that low pressure is somewhere along the borders of Oklahoma Missouri and Kansas kind of right in between all of those states right there and then it's gonna head further to the south and to the east you see some snow for Kansas Missouri Arkansas if this were to be correct uh, and also I would watch out I think the Storm Prediction Center is going to put out some sort of risk uh, sometime soon for this area right here because the GFS of the Canadian and the uh, European model are all showing some sort of convective activity through there. Probably a marginal risk, but who knows, it could be a slight risk. I would definitely just watch out for the potential for some severe weather down there. And then if we zoom in here, you start to see that the system heads further east. You see a little area of actually northern energy right down here. And it's going to be a very, very weak system, but it's going to drop further to the south and to the east and this is what's going to allow some of that colder air to drop further to the south and to the east and here's your system down here into portions of the southeast and as we continue this for uh, continue this forward this would be by friday afternoon and you're actually dealing with uh that system heading off uh to off the north carolina coast but what we're going to see is that this northern piece of energy which is now near west virginia is going to collide with this and that's what's actually going to allow some snowfall on that back end for north carolina and southeastern Virginia. So 
you do start to see a little bit of that rain snow mix over some portions of North Carolina and Virginia and then that system continues to head off further to the east so this is not really a good tool to use in terms of how much snowfall you're gonna see but this is actually a rather good tool to see where's the footprint of that snow where is that snow actually setting up uh, and it will be kind of confusing because we do see snow from other systems up further to the north so anything you see within this area is not from that system uh, and that's from other systems but all of this snow down here this is all from that system uh, and you can see all the way from the, the Dakotas down through Nebraska and Kansas into Missouri with a little uh, hole over portions of the Tennessee Valley and then uh, that snow enters back into the mid-Atlantic there you are dealing with some snowfall although it will probably be lighter if it just takes that mid-Atlantic path and it just stays further to the south now here's what the GFS is showing and you can see it is actually quite different we're not seeing that much snow in Kansas and Nebraska or Missouri for these regions and we're also not seeing a lot of snow for southeastern Virginia or eastern North Carolina like what the uh, European model was showing but we do see that wide band uh, of some snowfall for portions of uh, the interior mid-Atlantic and then back through into the coastal northeast there uh, and that could definitely be a fairly decent sizable snow uh, snowfall uh, if that were to actually occur and then here's what the Canadian model is showing and it's showing actually a rather decent thumbprint of snow for portions of uh, the Dakotas down into Nebraska, Kansas, and Missouri with another area of actually quite sizable snowfall for portions of uh, North Carolina and Virginia and a little bit of West Virginia there. So you can see how these models really do differ. Uh, right now, the European and the Canadian model both agree the most. The Canadian model and the European model disagree in terms of how much snowfall you're going to see, but of course, that's going to be something that you should expect this far out, where you're five days out, there still could be so much change within the models. So, don't expect the exact values that you're seeing right here, where you're seeing six to ten inch amounts to actually be true. Uh, it'll probably be half those amounts, maybe cut those amounts and take about a third of that, and that might be a better estimate uh, but really I use this tool a lot more for just seeing where is the snow going to set up because it can really be a good tool for that where does the bulk of that snow set up where does the outline of that snow set up and that can actually be the best way to use this tool so that is going to wrap it up for today's video please consider liking the video subscribing and turning on notifications and I'll see you guys in the next video goodbye